My name is John Passfield, and the title of this reading will be John and Dickens, video 19, questions 1. Here's my novella, John and Dickens, A Christmas Mystery, a novella by John Passfield. That's John in the writing room of Charles Dickens. Dickens is surrounded by characters, Dickens characters, but not the characters of A Christmas Carol. There's a problem with those characters, as John will find out. These are the pre Christmas Carol Dickens characters. Here's a summary, uh, which is found on the back cover of the novella. Writer John Passfield leaves his home, buys a coffee, and drives down to the shores of Lake Erie to perform a Christmas ritual, strolling along the beach at Port Maitland. It's something he's done for many years, but this year is different. This year, John suddenly finds himself in the writing room of famed Victorian novelist Charles Dickens, who sets out his new idea for a Christmas tale. Dickens invites John to watch rehearsals for the writing of the story, but as Dickens struggles through contentious negotiations with his amazingly independent characters, John wonders whether A Christmas Carol will ever be written. So, it's the premise of every one of my novels and novellas that every word of the text is an image in the mind of the main character. This means that in the case of this novella, every word of the text is an image in the mind of John, the character who gets to meet Charles Dickens. In the course of designing a form for the poetic novel of our time, I have developed a set of image presentation techniques. As we humans ask ourselves questions as we move through our life experience, so too my main characters ask themselves questions as they live through the life experience events of the novels and novellas. Here are some of the questions that John is asking of himself. So, let's go to page 7 of chapter 1 for the first set of questions. So this is John living through an experience, but part of his mind is asking another part of his mind questions as he goes. So try to get a grip on this experience. What's happening here is the big question. What is special for you about Christmas? How many Christmases have you known? Does any one of your Christmases rank above them all? So that's the first set of questions. This is at the beginning of the first chapter of thought. Let's go to page 12 which is the end of the first chapter of thought, where one compartment of John's mind is asking him another set of questions. Was Christmas better when you were a boy? Is Christmas better now that you're old? Is Christmas better as experienced in life or as read in a book? Now remember, we're talking about Dickens' A Christmas Carol, a book about Christmas. Let's go to page uh, 16 for more questions. Here we are. What questions would you want to ask of Charles Dickens? What could possibly add, what could he possibly add to what he has written? Would all of your questions be answered by his books? Wouldn't all of your questions be answered by his books? What else could he possibly say? Okay, let's go to, um, that was what, page 16. Let's go to page 23 for more questions. Page 23. What is the relationship between Dickens and his characters? What is the relationship between Dickens and his books? Is Dickens different from other authors or the same? And then another set of questions would be this. Now remember, John is living through this experience, and only once in a while does one compartment of his mind try to get an overview by asking questions about the whole situation. Where does a book go when it has been read? Other, of course, than back on the shelf. Does it settle down in the deepest depths of the mind? So that's the question. What happens to a book when you read it? Um, page uh, 32, for the last set of questions I'm going to read in this reading, this presentation. 
here it is, 32, page 32. What is the process of image creation on the ocean floor of the mind? What is the purpose of all that turmoil underground? So, the level of image creation in the mind is the deepest level. I've mentioned before that in Shakespeare, we get the surface talk, the prose talk of Hamlet and Macbeth and King Lear and Lady Macbeth and Cleopatra, but we also get the depth thought, which comes out by convention as the words they're speaking, and these are the images, the imagery by which they're thinking. In Shakespeare, is presented as the words they're speaking, okay, not in plenty of other items of literature. Okay, here's a thought. Lately, I've been developing a theory about literature, which is based on the image of a tree. I've never cared for books which suggest that the experience of a story is rare and valuable for that reason. I've always cared for books that tell us about what it is to be human, what it is for every human to live upon this earth. I think that the greatest books are set at the root level of the human experience and that lesser books, entertaining and informative as they may be, are set at the branch level of human experience. That at the root level we are reading about all people at all times and at the branch level we are reading about some people or some individuals at some times. Although it's valuable to read books about various social topics, it's very important that we do so in order that society can improve. The value of these books is that they are timely. They deal with social issues in real time. They are state of the society documents which we need in order to improve the lives of ourselves and of those around us. But by the same criterion, these books are not timeless books. Lesser literature stresses the interaction of the various groups of people as they are defined in current society at present time. These books do not stress the interaction of all peoples in our society at the present time, nor of all peoples in all societies at all times. Though these books have characters, settings, and actions, they're actually sociological lectures disguised as novels. In 10 or 15 years, these books will have had their day. They will be interesting and even valuable as historical records of our time, but they will not take their place as timeless literature. Timeless literature is pitched at the level of the roots of human experience, and time-bound literature is pitched at the level of the branches of human experience. Different levels of literature have been stressed in different societies, but the continuity of all societies can be seen in the literature that is pitched at the level of the roots of the life of a society, the level at which we, all writers and all readers, explore what it is to be human. So, this is my novella, John and Dickens, A Christmas Mystery, a novella by John Passville. It's found on Amazon. There's information there. My uh, publisher's website is rocksmillspress.com, R-O-C-K-S-M-I-L-L-S-P-R-E-S-S.com. More information there. At my website, johnpassfield.ca, J-O-H-N-P-A-S-S-F-I-E-L-D.ca, there's two free books, a planning notebook and a journal, a journal of reflection. So if you click on the icons of those two books, you'll get them on your screen to read for free. Lastly, I'll say thank you for watching this video.